As a hazmat specialist or emergency response team member, approaching unknown materials is a time of high anxiety and possible exposure to personnel dangers. What's in these containers? Flammable chemicals? Acid or just water? Who knows? That barrel is bulging. Could be pressurized. Time to back off and assess the situation. Many hazmat teams have little or no training in how to respond to incidents involving bulging drums. And at present, there is no quick, inexpensive, and reliable method for determining pressure inside such drums. Uncontrolled pressure release from storage containers can be extremely dangerous, spreading chemicals, injuring workers, and damaging property. Now, hazardous materials experts at Los Alamos National Laboratory's Group ESH-10 are studying the inherent dangers involved in pressurized waste containers. Tests are being performed to determine the relationship between internal pressure and axial deformation or bulge in steel and plastic drums commonly used as storage containers. Experimental results will be used as a training aid for hazardous waste responders and to develop a system of gauges for on-site evaluation of individual containers. Tests are being performed with 55-gallon metal and plastic drums. 30-gallon metal and plastic drums, 20-gallon plastic drums, and 85-gallon metal overpacks. Drums are placed inside a containment cage, subjected to increasing internal pressure okay. at 5 pounds per square PSI. inch gauge intervals. 5 PSI. And the resulting deformation measured at each pressure interval. Okay, we got 0.75 on the top, 0.5 on the bottom. Observations are made until each drum is judged to have failed. Barrels tested are new from different manufacturers and incorporate both closed and open head designs. Barrels are tested empty, half full of water, three quarters full of water, and four fifths filled with concrete. The concrete fill is to simulate storage techniques used at Los Alamos. Exercise caution when relating these test results to used or old drums whose integrity may be compromised. Also, deformation or bulging of a closed head drum in the field only indicates that it has been subjected to internal pressure, not necessarily that it is under pressure at the time of inspection. Still, the design of these containers makes them capable of violent rupture, and care should be taken when approaching any deformed drum. Test results indicate that the chimes or rims on 55-gallon closed-head drums show some distortion approximately 5 PSIG before failure. Intermittent pinging can be heard on both closed and open-head 55-gallon drums at 15 to 25 PSIG. This pinging noise is associated with expanding metal. Pinging becomes more intense on 55-gallon closed-head drums immediately prior to failure. If pinging occurs in a field situation, imminent danger exists. There is strong potential for closed-head 55-gallon and closed and open-head 30-gallon metal drums to fail explosively, making the entire drum a projectile. All of the 85 and 55 gallon open head drums tested self-vented. 
This venting occurred in all instances near the nut and bolt fastener on the ring. These ventings were not explosive and occurred at lower pressures. We found that 30 gallon closed head drums can hold and maintain pressure in excess of 120 PSIG, making them extremely dangerous. One of two open head 30 gallon drums failed explosively. 90% of the seamless 55 gallon high density polyethylene and 50% of the 30 gallon HDPE or plastic drums failed explosively out of the side of the drum. Whereas all of the metal drums failed out of the ends. The plastic seam constructed 20 gallon drums failed explosively on the bottom seam. Sealed containers of all types have the potential to become pressurized and therefore hazardous. Experimental data supports the development of a device for measuring internal drum pressure in field conditions. Such a device would enhance the safety of Department of Energy personnel, private and municipal fire departments, hazmat teams, and other waste workers responding to bulging drum incidents. The range of options available to mitigate bulging drums is almost as varied as the number of organizations that might respond. Some options are inexpensive, such as relieving drum pressure through puncture. For example, by firing a bullet into the barrel, or puncturing it with an arrow or spear gun. These techniques don't cost much, but are in themselves inherently dangerous, through the possibility of ricochets or flash ignition of the drum's contents. At the other end of the spectrum are expensive remote-controlled robots that can fire disabling slugs into suspect barrels. By the way, we were able to clean up the camera after this demonstration. And other techniques exist. There's several different methods out there uh, used for opening bulging drums. One of the methods we've been told people use is, uh, is take a forklift and set the tines on top of the, the lid and then using a bung wrench you loosen the bung and relieve the pressure on the bung. Uh, this is not something that we would recommend that people do. Another method of dealing with pressurized drum is to apply, apply ice or dry ice. By cooling it we reduce the pressure and decrease the danger uh, when eventually you, you have to open it. At Los Alamos, we've developed the remote container sampling device. This device is used to vent bulging or pressurized drums. It's a pneumatically operated device. Uh, has a, a cable and uh, air hoses that extend 150 feet away from the uh, bulging drum. Uh, the ram pokes a hole through the uh, barrel. The seal then seals the material inside the barrel and the pressure can be vented through a plastic line uh, to the sample bag or to a, another container. This device is lightweight, can be operated with uh, ease with just one person and in case we have a, a catastrophic failure of the container you are at least 150 feet away from the device when it's operated. When working with flammable or combustible materials an inert gas can be injected into the tube and this reduces the likelihood of a fire or explosion. So when dealing with uh, pressurized drums, we recommend that you use some sort of remote container sampling device such as this or uh, projectile type operation. One other method of depressurizing bulging drums is to use a disruption tool. Disruption tools can usually be acquired from your local bomb disposal team if you have one in the area. There are several different types. This is the most common type. It's called the Pan Disruptor. It's issued to every bomb team by the FBI Hazardous Devices School. Best way to do it is you need to go in protected in gear much like this. You set your tool up. It's initiated by a piece of shock tube or non-L. Your cartridge is right in the breech. You set it up from a distance of about 25 feet from the barrel so you're still protected. You go ahead, aim it with a laser sight to about midsection of your barrel, remove your sight, 
back off to a remote area and fire from there and you can be totally protected from the barrel uh, during depressurization. Understanding what bulging drums look like at various pressures and at what pressures drums fail will enhance the safe working envelope that we as emergency responders rely on for not only our personal safety, but the safety of our communities.